now. My name is Abba Makama. And you're watching Plug It on Accelerate. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, first question on this. What is the trajectory of film festivals and how do you think they will impact Nigerian film industry in the next five years? <sighs> yeah. Well, film festivals, it's something I tell filmmakers to actually start investing in and, um, you know, reserving special funds for it is expensive. But at the end of the day, it gives you a platform, an international platform where your films can be seen, where you can also get access to very, very, very mouth-watering distribution deals you know, get associated with other filmmakers from other clients, watch films from other clients, see how other filmmakers shoot their films. It's a platform that the, the importance can never be overemphasized, you know, and it's something we're beginning to now get used to. And I hope as time goes on, a lot of filmmakers would understand the importance of, you know, film festivals. What's the importance of it in the industry? It gives us that it actually helps us to start making films that would be able to speak in an international space knowing that you don't have to shoot a film that looks like an Hollywood film to sell in Hollywood. But when you shoot a film that represents and speaks, you know, for where you are coming from and it's a film that you can identify with, it would also speak to the world. Everybody falls in love, everybody laughs, everybody is happy. There are languages that are understood worldwide. Take for instance our film Lost of Kuroshi that just screened at the Toronto International Film Festival that is a film that is talking about masquerades, you know, which a lot of us have lost um, connection to. So when you watch the film, it actually makes you want to go back home and understand what this masquerade are about, you know. So things like that is what the film festival does. They don't make you lose who you are, but they actually make you more connected to where you're coming from so that you can sell yourself to the world with what you have, your culture, your traditions, your food, everything you have. It gives you that one platform to sell it. So yes, film festivals are really important, really, 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 really important. And I really hope that while we are setting aside money for production, money for post-production, money for P&A, we should also set aside money for film festivals so that we can have this platform to push our films and also get um, access to awesome distribution deals because the more your film do well the more you put it on that platform where you can negotiate you know with confidence because you know that yeah my film was here my film was here you have all these big platforms chasing you to have your films you know so it's a, an awesome platform where filmmakers need to yeah can i also just add that as you said film festivals um you mentioned p and a film festivals should be part of your p and a like it's literally a marketing platform. It's also a film market where people go to broker their next film deal, where they go to sell the film and whatnot. And I mean, with Lights Camera Africa, which the Lost Okoroshi will be premiering, doing its Niger premiere on Friday the 27th, um, has in the past five years has literally gotten bigger and bigger in terms of scale. And hopefully, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be on that level with top five like Toronto, Cannes, Venice and whatnot. So awesome time to be a Nigerian filmmaker. Really awesome time. What are the highlights of your filmmaking journey so far? Ah, so many. I mean from making my first short film um, director, first Nigerian short film director um, in 2010 to doing an Al Jazeera documentary in 2014. And then um, doing Green White Green, which had its international premiere at Toronto, and um, selling it and distributing it on Netflix and three international airlines and on Canal Plus, and traveling to over 20 international film festivals in the world. I've been to Russia, I've been to Germany, I've been to France, I've been to Spain, I've been to. Ah, I can't like. I'm constantly traveling because of this film and all I ever wanted to do in my life is live in a very comfortable space um, and travel the world, literally. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So those have been the highlights of my career so far. How 
how do you deal with live feedback and criticism when preparing at a film festival? For me, I'm one of those people that don't dwell on the positivity and hearing all the good things about the film because as a filmmaker, I actually know where my film sucks. So whether you want to tell me or not, I know. So if something is bad and then you come to me and you want to make it sound really nice, I'd rather you tell me straight up what the problem is so that my next film, I would work on those shortcomings that I had in the other film. So I'm one of those people that actually love my film to be criticized. I love criticism because I think it makes me better. Um, so make it constructive in a way where you don't come and say, oh, I just watched rubbish. Let me know what was rubbish. Was it the acting? Was it the story? Was it the, the costume, the sound design, the cinematography? I would like to know what exactly it was so that next time I would make sure I don't make that kind of mistake. So I really love it, no matter how blunt it is. I'm a very blunt person, so I really love when people come straight up to me and tell me, I didn't like this, 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 this. I think it would have been better if you had done this, 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 this. You know, it would help me next time I'm doing that. Raymond. I beg you, go feed the come office like this for this week. Come on. What is your favorite cocktail? Um. Ah. I always used to enjoy the tortoise and the hare type folktales, you know, because of underdog but I also just like the arrogance of the, the hair um, then all these anyone that had to do it like jazz you know all those stories were also dope and, um, Tales by Moonlight ah man that was a show in fact when you watch Loss of Oroshi you see elements of Tales by Moonlight in there and funny enough Lights Camera Africa this year the team is That's called the team. Tales, Tales by Moonlight so um there are so many folk tales. I mean, there are some from my mom's tribe that I can't even do to. Anyways, for now, tortoise and the air. What has your biggest challenge been working in the Nigerian film industry? <sighs> Shooting for 24 hours. <laughs> There is a lot of knowledge, a lot from, from shooting with people that are very insensitive um, to people's feeling, to paying for film permits and still having to deal with area boys, agurus. Um, even after you, you pay for the film permit, so you pay for the Lagos State film permit first, so you have say I want to shoot on the bridge, I have access to that. I still have to pay for that space again. I probably would also get a security person, say police or Mopol. Still, the agreements will come and I still have to pay them or they will threaten to take my equipment away. So all that is a lot of challenge. We don't have that enabling environment to, to film. You have the generator noise that Everybody always complains about our sound, not realizing how draining it is for us to actually film. Filming sound in anywhere in the world is challenging. Talk of here, that you anywhere. have generator sounds 24 hours, and then you have the drivers that would not take their hands off their own. They are always just psh, psh, psh. So, you know, um, it's everything. Everything about filming here is challenging. You know, you have that. And then you have that always trying to contend with people that you have paid money to come and walk. Eagles. Yeah, and then they come on set and they are acting like you, as if they are doing you a favor. We're all doing ourselves a favor. We all need ourselves, you know. Um, but for me, I would say my greatest challenge would actually be managing this area boys on the road. And I have come to understand that you have to give to Caesar what is so just make sure you always have something ready even though you have your permits even though you have your mobile you still have to have your money ready and then give it to them so just go and look for so i've known how to deal with it so i just go look for who's the biggest guy and then 
take care of the biggest guy so the biggest guy would help take care of the other guys i think that's actually um been my major challenge every other thing um all my all my shoots i always try and plan for the worst so whenever that happens i am ready when you hear lights camera action what comes to mind yeah just that really <laughs> When you ask that question, the next thing that comes is the actors that are taking their life. Exactly. And that sound better be rolling. And DOP, make sure you fit record. I don't want to now hear good take again. Like, oh, oh I didn't press record. Now we take it again or we forgot card or something like that. Interesting stories. We shot at Balogo Market one day with the masquerade. And like people just gathered around the reaction was mad. We got back to the car park. He rolled, but there was no card. Yeah, we had to go back. How excited are you about the festival this year, seeing that you also have a film premiering at the festival? Um, I'm very excited. I mean, this is the first time Nigerians are going to get to see it. It's already screened at Toronto, and um, it was overwhelmingly amazing. We've gotten so many great reviews. It has a hundred percent. And brought into matter. Can you beat that? It's covered by Hollywood Reporter Variety. So, like, we've we've conquered internationally. Nigerians are stubborn now to come and show it here. As in, that's an even more panic screening it here because they'll be like, this guy just went and made noise abroad now. And made it work for you or whatever. But it's all good. Man. Just, I know they would like to be Bobo. They'll be Bobo in there. And, and she's going to hear all the yeah, I'm really excited to see the film because um, this will be the first time I'm seeing the film and I've heard amazing reviews from Toronto. I have a lot of family friends that saw the film and then um, called to talk about the film. So I'm actually really looking forward to Friday to um, see the film, see all the performances and see the magic ABBA did with the film. Yeah, and I heard Ugoma has some, some crazy stuff lined up as well. Oops. Tell us about the Lights Camera Africa Festival. Um, LCA, Lights Camera Africa Festival, um, is, uh, I think it's the champion of independent filmmaking so far. Films that don't necessarily get like the theatrical release or um, are not commercial, quote unquote, but are done by artists who make films on a politics. A home for that. I mean, LC started how many years now? This is the ninth year or so. And I remember when they started, it was a small room in here, and now it's grown to this, this big thing. You know? and, um, yeah, I've screened three of my films there my Nollywood Alpha documentary, Green White Rain, and now Lost of Uruchi. So it's become, it's become home for me. I'm Ugoma, and a very good friend of mine as well. So um, yeah, LC is. And I think everyone should actually plan to attend um, this year because the lineup is really, like I said, amazing. Aside the fact that our film is premiering, it's having its Nigerian premiere, I think people should actually make plans to come. It's from 27th to 29th right. of September. This Friday. Hello, my name is Chibi Thank you for watching Vlogby. And uh, subscribe. <laughs> Click the button down. It's down here. Yeah, subscribe to it. And Abba Bakaba saying, peace out. Plug it. Subscribe. Revenue. <laughs> Red TV. Bye, guys. Looking forward to seeing you at LCA.